Blessed are those who love you. Happy those who follow you. Blessed are those who seek you, O God. May the blessings of God be yours all the days of your life. May the peace and the love of God live always in your heart. Blessed are those who love you, happy those who follow you. Blessed are those who seek you, O God. Welcome to Cathedral. I'm Father Greg Sackowitz. Special thanks once again to uh, Mark Teresi and David Jonas. Mark and David, each week you provide beautiful, beautiful music. I can't thank you enough. So again, to David and Mark, thank you. Special thanks once again to Paul Klein, who does everything, our director, producer, choreographer for this spiritual video. So Paula, with your beautiful smile included, thank you. It's hard to believe 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time, start of October, Sunday, October 1, where did summer go? Where did September go? Fall is moving much too quickly. Begin this way. A husband says to his wife, Honey, I'm turning 40 next week. I want a brand new sports car that goes between 0 and 220 in 4.2 seconds. She says, We could never afford a gift like that for you for your 40th birthday. Week goes by, he says, Listen up, I'm turning 40 in a few days. I want something that goes between 0 and 220 in 4.2 seconds for my birthday. Surprise me. So for his birthday, <laughs> she surprised him and got him a brand new bathroom scale. <laughs> oh, that one, that one kills me. Oh my gosh, that is really funny. Oh, think about this. No matter what we do or say, most of us at times worry too much. We worry too much. Did you know that the German word for worry means to strangle? The Greek word means to divide the mind. Both are accurate. I like that. The German word for worry means to strangle. The Greek word for worry means to strangle or to divide the mind, to divide the mind. Worry is a noose around the neck and a distraction of the mind, neither of which is befitting for joy. If you think about it, we all know people who worry way too much. If you think about it, does worry help a situation? No, never does. In fact, many years ago, I knew a lady, all she did was worry, worried, worry, worry, a complete worry wart, worried about everything. In fact, I once said to her kiddingly, I said, you worry so much that if you had nothing to worry about, you'd be worried because you had nothing to worry about. And she laughed, but it was kind of true. Today's gospel is 26 Sunday to Ordinary Time, the two sons. One son says, Father, I'll go work in the field, but doesn't. The other son says, Father, I won't go, but then changes his mind and goes work in the field. Maybe they, they had much on their minds, too much worry, too much stress. In today's gospel, the two sons are really all of us. What do I mean? These two sons surface two themes which encompass our journey through life. The first theme brought up by the actions of the two sons is a sense of personal worth, which is the backbone of human identity and the essential foundation of human happiness. The second theme is a sense of personal responsibility. In this context, I often thought of people either as owners or blamers. You know, many people who own their actions, many people who spend their whole life blaming others. 
We either accept personal responsibility for our lives and owning our actions and reactions, or we're always blaming others. It's their fault. But let's face it, all of us have problems. Every one of us, to some degree, have problems. We all have some anxiety at times, depressing days, and frustration. But are we handling them most of the time, or are they controlling us most of the time? That's a key question. When we are afraid to face life, we stand the chance of losing life. If insecurity or fears control us, we run from life, avoiding risks and refusing to be involved with people. We take no responsibility out of fear or failure. The result is that we become more inadequate, losing our self-confidence and maybe our self-respect. In all our problems, it's always important to be aware of God's presence within us. God is with us. You know, think about this for a moment. When someone says, God has abandoned me, where is God? God never abandons us. We sometimes abandon God, but God is always with us each moment of our lives. Even though at times we may feel the Lord himself has abandoned us. Christ became human, one of us, not to take away our problems, but to teach us to cope with them and so live more responsibly. How? By an attitude of, discuss of discovery. Listen to the following. I slept and I dreamed that life was all joy. I woke and I saw that life was but service. I served and understood that service was joy. There is no such thing as being a Christian. There is only becoming a Christian. We're always becoming something more. In some ways, we're not human beings. We're human becomings, trying to become hopefully something more or better, living our life for others. That's why to believe in God is to know God is there always to give us a second chance. We have a God of second, third, fourth chances, always forgiving, always offering an opportunity to start over. Our attitude must be that of Christ, for living is a creative process and creativity is sparked by contrast. This contrast is clearly revealed in the life of Jesus Christ. When others were taking, Jesus was giving. When others were condemning, Jesus was forgiving. When others were accumulating, Jesus was emptying. When others were putting down, Jesus raised up. When others mocked and were mocked, Jesus loved. He forgave. We are challenged to do the same. For our attitude must be that of Jesus Christ. Live each day as though it were your last because one day you will be right. May God bless all of you. The bears, wow, wow. Whew. They're actually underdogs at home against Denver, if that's possible. I pray to God, they haven't won a game in almost a year. So God, cut us some slack. At least one bears victory this year. And the Cubs, tough series loss in Atlanta. They need to do some winning in Milwaukee to have a chance for the playoffs. God bless all of you. Amen. Oh